Time we headed off to Nagpur in India and joined Zubin Barucha. Zubin averaged over 42 in first class cricket but quit as a player after only three years at the top level to do an MBA and develop a successful business career. Now I played against Zubin at club level and he was a serious player. Well now he coaches at his own academy as assistant coach to IPL team Rajasthan Royals and as batting coach to a distinguished list of Indian international cricketers. Now, given the debate that's raged in England about how to play spin in the subcontinent, we felt sure that CA members would be more than interested in his approach to coaching batting against spin and what they might take from it to enhance their own coaching. <laughs> My philosophies are, are still very simple, very basic. Uh, as a batsman, I like alignment. Uh, I like to see the head and the feet in the right position. I'm not too much about you know, where your back lift comes from or where it goes. And if you're bowling, you have to set up mechanisms by which they learn automatically. I want to see the ball by default going between a certain space. If it goes between that little space there, you know the rest of the result's going to take care of itself. So the hoops are basically there to create that opportunity where you don't have the option. You know, it's, it's good or bad, and that's how we teach the youngsters, you know. If it doesn't go in the grid, and it's not going straight, it's bad. If it goes straight and it goes through, it's good. Nice, little bit short. You just held on to it too long, huh? just a little bit. Release, release, release. Let's go. Up, up. Nice, short, short. Not using enough body, huh? You just came here. More body. We played our first match without them actually ever playing a match or bowling in a net. And we played the first under nine match or whatever it was with these kids. And there were two wide balls and the opposition had over 20 wide balls. So it just shows you how you can get results without having to be overly coached at that young age. Let it go up, use your body to bring it down. Twist, up, better, better, much better. Up, up, and push forward. Nice, better, better. Once you've got the basics, I would like to bowlers to evolve to that next level. You know, can you find that next delivery to bowl? Uh, you know, can you bowl that flipper? Can you bowl the googly? Can you bowl the straighter one? Uh, can you master that? You know, do this one thing, go away, master it. It's the same with the batting. You know, I'm a great believer in onside play for batsmen. Until you have a good onside game, you're not going to be a successful batsman. I'm kind of more result oriented. So if you've seen from the drills that we've got with the grid and the thin bat and the tiny ball, that's all based on where the ball ends up. The grid is basically uh, focused only on maintaining alignment. What we find with most kids uh, and, and, and adults as well is this hip joint when you bat, whether it's the left or the right. Well, I mean, as humans, we're, we're built to move forward. You know, we, we walk that way. So unless we're ballerina trained, when this hip is not going to go that way. So as kids, we, they either tend to go all the way that way or all the way that way. So the left foot either goes there, way across the body, or it goes away from the body. It very rarely goes exactly where it needs to go. So the grid is basically set up to align your body so that it keeps going in that same position. And, and the, the alignment is such that the outside edge of the bat doesn't pass the off stump. That means you're perfectly aligned to play a good ball that's on middle stump. And you're, you're perfectly aligned, you might meet it right in front of your bat. And that's, that's the reason we've got that grid. Good. Fingers, fingers, bottom hand fingers. The grid helps onside play because it gets the head over the knee and the bat way in front. When you're in that position, now you can play onside, offside, straight, wherever you want. It's the perfect position from where to play. We want you coming along this line, okay? None of this, none of this, okay? As soon as you start using the, this finger, the middle one, the bat's gonna go like that, okay? So just there with the bottom hand finger coming in there, coming in there. Get that head over the knee. Yeah, perfect. So once you're in this position, you can start playing there, 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 wherever you want. Perfect, look at that. Dealing with uh, Raul Dravid, for example, who comes here, that's the first drill he did when he came here. He wasn't in the correct position. His bat was coming down at an angle. And immediately the ball was shooting off the edge of the bat that way. And, and he said, oh, this is what you were trying to explain to me over the phone. And then right next to him was a guy who, you know, has picked up a bat for the first time. So the way I approach the whole thing is that it has to be the same up to a point in the foundation. And then you just let them flow. Then everybody's different. 
not this way, okay? This way, okay? That keeps the bat's face straight. Okay, that's good. Good, very nice. Okay, top hand. Let's go top hand. Get on that toe, get on the back foot toe. Yeah, okay. It's important, guys, to get on that back foot toe. Okay, we don't want to see this. We don't want you to see lunging there. Release that toe, release that toe. Gives you another half an inch to get on top of the ball. So if you are in this position here, by default, playing on the onside becomes much easier. So you don't have to actually start coaching them how to play on the onside, just let it happen. And this is the best drill to just let it happen. Okay, let's go to bottom hand. Bottom hand, control the bottom hand. Learn how to use the bottom hand. Two fingers only, two fingers only. Good, excellent, excellent, good. You will find that a lot of batsmen tend to hold the bat with the bottom three fingers of the bottom hand. What that does is takes the bat off its plane. So if it's coming straight like that, the bat will always be at an angle. When these bottom three fingers control the bat. See where the bat is? It's going that way. Yeah. So it's the same with this. So as soon as you release the fingers, the bat straightens up. And as soon as this finger, if it stays there, yeah. the bat will go back there. It has to be behind there. Yeah, just there. Where, then it comes straight. Very nice, very nice. See that? Nice and straight. Excellent. Excellent. Doesn't matter if you miss it. Don't worry about missing it. Get the technique right. You'll never have a problem after that. So, left arm spinner to you. You don't have an offside. Okay, there's no offside for you today. Wherever the ball lands, you have to play straight or you're hitting it on the onside, you're fine. You've not got to get out. Okay, so you're not hitting across it, you're just defending. Even if it's spinning away from you, you're getting across and defending. If it's spinning away from you, don't just turn your wrist on it from there. Go to the ball, defend it, but let the ball go this way, towards straight or mid on. First master the onside, nobody's ever going to get you out then. So your job is to try and make him drive over here. His job is to refrain from driving here, okay? Good. So this whole area is open to you. I like to set it up so that the result takes care of itself. And this whole result-oriented thing came to me when I wanted to do something for Indian cricket, where I thought that it's impossible for a top quality coach to be in a small village. And so I came up with this plan of setting up a system whereby the coaching goes over to the kids, the coaches get out of the you know, way and let the kids automatically learn. And that's when I came up with these philosophies of how you learn without having a coach constantly tell you do this or do that. Come on guys, make him play on the offside. No pad, no pad. Where's the bat? Where's the bat? Yeah. Very well bowled. Now that's what we don't want to see. Get your foot further across. No, no, no. On the front foot. Play it. So where was that ball landing? So get your foot further across. Yeah, exactly. That's the whole point. The ball should not end up there. If the batsman picks up the bat the way he does, I'm fine. As long as when he plays forward, the ball doesn't end up going to point and gully. The ball has to end up in front of you. That's the purpose of playing a forward defence. The purpose of playing forward is not to play forward and let the ball dribble over the gully. That kind of gets me going. So I like to see a forward defence to go to mid-on, mid-off. That's fine. Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Nice. Good. Everything on the onside. Come on, bowlers. Drag him across. Yeah, go. So if that ball lands there, I still want you to go across. Okay? Good shot. Well played. With spin, you've got to have a, a mindset which says that you don't play at the ball. You want to play where it might end up. Go, go. Yeah, nice. If it's wider, go on the back foot. Huh? Take your time, go on the back foot. Good, well played. Well played, very well done. Good technique. If you stand still like this, with the bat here, and you, you try and flick it, it'll only go to one location. You can't place that ball. But if I slowly start to release this foot, now I can play this ball a little later and play it finer or even play it squarer, wherever I want. So you have to fall to place the ball. It happens naturally. Every batsman does it. Every batsman who's good on the onside does it. It's just that we don't teach it. Ah, now where? Go, yeah. No, release. You have to release that back foot, otherwise you'll never reach the ball. Yeah, I'll show you. Stand in front, stand in front. You have to go to the ball, release the back foot. So if you go from here and the ball is there, you'll get stuck doing this. You have to go to the ball. 
Got it? I'm a hard taskmaster when I need to get something corrected and, and somebody is doing it incorrectly, then I, I definitely want to get it corrected before I leave. So if somebody wants to stay here all night, I will be here all night till we get it right. Go. Nah, see you didn't release the foot. If you don't release the foot, you're not going to connect. That means you're hitting across the line. You've got to get your foot there, then release. Much better, much better. Much better. Yeah, well tried, well tried. So you release the foot a little bit, so at least you got there. Got to release that foot. Okay, off spinners, off spinners. Now you can only play on the back foot. Okay? Okay, learn how to go back and play. Doesn't matter where it lands, you have to defend. Go, go. Yeah, play only on the offside. Only on the offside. Either play straight, go back straight, or here. You see, this ball, what happened is, you came here. The ball is spinning into you, right? So go back here. If the ball is spinning in, you can't go there. You went here, so you played it there. If the ball is spinning in, go here. Play here. Don't go across here. Then you're going further away from the ball. Okay? Go back. Nice. Very nice. Hold. See, again you went across, right? Yeah. Correct. Because the ball is coming into you, right? Here, go here. Beautiful. Good. Beautifully played. Well done. Well done. Good. Office. Same rule, no offside for you. Everything on the onside. Most of the practice that we set up uh, in, as a centre wicket practice is based around challenges. You know, don't hit the ball on the offside with the ball leaving you. Try and play against the break. So if you master playing against the break, I mean, there's very little that's going to go wrong with your batting as you progress into the future. Beautiful, beautiful. That's the movement. There, into it. Yeah. Yeah, good. Well adjusted. Well adjusted. Come on, bowlers, make him play here. He's taking you from across. Everything on the onside. Should be ashamed on a turning wicket. Beautiful. That's the way you play. Excellent. Imagine what are you going to do the ball if you want to hit it through the offside now. Piece of cake. Easy. Ah, this one we need to talk about, huh? We need to talk about this. Remember I talked about using this back foot. You've got to put yourself in that position in practice a little bit to know what is possible. And in fact, one of the batsmen today was struggling with that. He was actually struggling to go back and do it. He, he figured out the, the coming forward and playing across the line to the onside. He figured that out. But going back, he was struggling, which is fine because he's never done it. But all you need to do is do it a few times in the nets. What you did right now was there. Now that ball will only go to him. You won't be able to place that there. But if you use this foot, yeah, if you use this foot here, watch. If you go there and use this foot, you can then place him here or there or there. So drop that foot. Don't keep that foot in the air to do that. Beautifully played. Beautifully played. If he learns how to go back to the spinner, he'll definitely be able to get forward to the spinner. Played. Very well played. In front of the pad, turn the wrist. One run. Very well played. See, you use the foot there, so that means you can place that. Now, next time you can go even further. So, normally you were playing the ball here. Now you're waiting, waiting, waiting. You're letting it come. You're playing it here. This is his third time that he's come to us. The first time he came, he couldn't play a single ball on the onside. Huh? He's picked it up in three days. I mean, these shots are not easy, what he's trying. Huh? Seriously good shots, three days. He got it in his head and then he said he worked on it. Very well played. Excellent. Ah, well bowled, Giaz. Now what you did was there, you went back, you didn't lean into it. You held back here and then did this. You didn't lean into it. If you didn't go there, you were standing there and going like that. Yeah, now go, uh, what happened there? The reason you didn't connect, you didn't release your back foot. You just went there, you were tired, you played a lazy kind of just boom. No, release that back foot, then it can go there, there, there. You are just lazy on that one. Beautiful. Beautiful shot. More release of that foot means more power, huh? Beautiful, beautiful movements. Beautifully played. Head in the right position on top of the knee. Let the bat flow. 
opens out your whole game. So where is he going to control you? If, you, if he's bowling outside off stump, you're getting a single. You can go back, you can push him here. Game opens up. Suddenly you'll be batting 175 balls instead of 120 balls. Ah! Turn the bat on it too early, huh? You went here, you turn the bat on You didn't go there and then. That's the movement, yeah? Okay, same bowlers. He's going to play on the back foot only. Now, now, now one more thing. One important thing for you. If the ball is turning in, you go there. Now you're going away from the ball. So the ball is turning in, go here. Then you'll be able to play him there. Nice. Now what I want you to do is, I want you to play this. Power. Through there. But I wanted to go. Just now, what did you do? You know what you did? You went. I want power. Bang. So push this foot back. Correct. Use that foot. Well bold. You need to work on this, huh? Back foot thing. Much more, you need to work on it much more. Good. What you're doing is you're losing your power here. Watch this. Correct. It'll come. Correct. See, you like the cut shot, right? That's why you are going there. That's fine, that's fine. There's nothing wrong with that. But what I'm saying is you should have both options. The session evolves into playing everywhere. So every session has to evolve into playing everywhere. You can't just do one thing. So we evolve into playing here, playing there, play wherever you want. Now what we'll do is we'll open up both sides. You hit on both sides. Now I want to see that movement. Good shot. That's fine. Keep going. Nice. Well played. Good. One of the things that I've learned is having worked with some of the best players in the world and the youngsters coming through is we are not here to decide their future. We're here to give them the tools. We're here to sort of just explain to them what are the possibilities from a technical perspective, from a foundational perspective, not to decide what their futures are going to be or whether one's going to be very good or one's going to be very bad. We try and teach everybody in the same way. Good. First forward defense, then break the wrist and let the foot come. Correct. Good. Very good. Perfect. The nature of the practice had to change because he had never played that shot before and he was you know, learning for the first time. So I had to break it down into something very, very basic. And we were trying to teach the on-drive. So I just took it step by step by dropping the balls down on the ground, getting to play a forward defense, because every shot effectively on the front foot is an extension of that forward defense. So if you're on the front foot and you're defending here, then all it is is breaking your wrist and letting your foot release to play on the onside. So we just broke it down into various bits and then I think he was okay. So when you're playing the on drive, you should bring your foot over here, not here. Okay? I don't want the foot coming from here to here to play the on drive. I want the foot coming here, then your head's over the ball and then you can let the bat come in here. So it's here, here. Then you let the bat come in and turn the wrist over. So it's not this. I don't want you to play the on drive like that. I want you to play the on drive by getting the foot here. Then the bat comes in here, hit the ball, turn over. Either, either, either. Ah, good. Janu, jaisa jaate maro. Ab socho mat, maro. Plate. Nay, abhi paon ka gaya? Galat. That was wrong. That's how we should not do it. Very nice. One more, last one. Very nice. You don't plan to play on the onside. You see, you don't plan. You plan to play absolutely straight by keeping your balance. If your head's straight and your balance is straight. If your head's straight and your balance is going that way, you always want to play here. And now from here, once I'm in this position, I can then go there or there. Oh! He's been watchful for the last over and a half and just flicks it away through the gap of the wicket. Yes, lovely. Beautiful. Ah, abhi kya hua? Sida khelna hai. Sida, sida. Pehla forward defense, forward defense. Ah, Firdik, ah. First forward defense, then turn the wrist. Nay, you played early. Forward defense, forward defense. Ah, good. First play straight, then turn the wrist. Very good, perfect. Good. 
I think most of your experiences as a coach should come from your own learnings. Uh, except what you need to realize is the difference between your own learnings and somebody else's aptitude. And there's always a mismatch there because sometimes you're extremely talented and the person who you're teaching might not be as much. So you've got to take it very slowly and sometimes it could be the reverse as well. And as we know, everybody is an individual. There's not a single person who's the same. So we've got to kind of figure out how to get into the mind of that person and then take it from there. So that's kind of where I've kind of been with my coaching philosophies.